we got a hey, we got a seat behind that. If you want to sit in that seat right there behind the screen, you can bring that chair over here. You can. You gotta, you gotta. Well, okay. Well, how are we gonna do it? Glory, come on in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on in. We invite you to come on in on today. Hallelujah. Bless the name of our God. Hallelujah. Come on in. Come on in. We thank God for each one of you that are joining us on tonight. <clears throat> this is like we always do at this time. It is uh, Wednesday night and we are giving God glory. <clears throat> this is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Do I have anybody here that's glad that God has brought us to another day? Amen. Come on through. Come on through. Wave at me. Uh, make a comment. Let me know that you're here. Uh, God bless you, Shonda. God bless you, Pastor. Uh, Pastor Wright, I see you. Um, Elder Melvina Carpenter, God bless you. Thank you for joining us on tonight. Thank you for being here. Glory. This is Willie Carpenter here. This is uh, Minister Willie Carpenter here with True Light Healing and Deliverance Ministry. Uh, before we get started, let's let's go into our declarations. Let's go into our confessions. Uh, declarations mean that uh, when you are in a space by yourself, that means that when you are in a room by yourself or if you are in public, if you want to see God show up, then there are some things that you've got to say with your mouth, okay? There are some things that you've got to release. See, we we the, the, the issue is, Pastor, we, we use our mouths so much for other things. We use our mouth to, ex to express grief, okay? We use our mouth to express sadness, uh, to express heartache. Come on, we use our mouths for any, anything else under the sun. But what God is telling us on tonight is that if we want to see God show up, if we want to see God show up in our life, then we've got to open our mouth and we've got to confess some stuff. Come on. We, we've got to. The, the Bible says that there's healing in confession. So that means we've got to open our mouth and declare some stuff. We've got to declare, Lord, you are Lord of all. You've got to open your mouth and say, God. You are the God of my life, not my problems. We, we got to stop glorifying our problems. Stop. We got to stop saying that I'm sick, that I've got mental issues, that my that that, that I'm always going to be like this. Like this is the end for me. We've got to stop saying that because what happens is because we've already got authority. God is uh, we're going to talk about authority on tonight because God has already given us authority. If we misuse it, it could work against us. And I, and I'm going to show you how your authority can be misused. So we, we've got to exercise our mouth. We've got to open up our mouth and say, God, I praise you, regardless of what it looks like. Come on, we've got to make these confessions. And one of the things that we have to confess and declare in our atmosphere is the word of God. Glory to God. I'm going to be uh, uh, declaring some some things in our atmosphere on tonight. And one of the things I want to I uh, want to confess Watch this. Isaiah chapter 54, 17. We, we taught on that a few a few weeks ago. Isaiah 54, 17. What does that say? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rise against me in judgment, I condemn. This, that, that is coming from Isaiah 54, 17. Watch this. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Glory. We've got to say that. You got to say it like you believe it. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Come on. I, I, I dare you to say it. I, I dare you to open up your mouth and say that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Come on. When you get bold enough, see, listen, we, we, we want God to do things. We want God to save. We want God to deliver, but we don't want to be radical. <laughs> I, 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 I need some people who are ready to be radical. What do I mean by be radical? That means I'm not being quiet. Okay. 
We want to go on mute when, when, when we've got problems hitting our life. But we are in a time period now where we cannot afford to be quiet. Come on. We can't afford to be quiet on God. We've got to be radical. We've got to confess the scripture over my life. Come on. I've got to confess it. No weapon formed against me. What kind of weapon am I talking about? I'm not talking about guns and knives. Okay. We're not talking about swords and spears. Watch this. I'm talking about drugs. Glory to God. I I I'm talking about depression. I'm talking about anxiety. Come on. I I I'm talking about the feeling of, of hopelessness, of worthlessness. Come on. I I'm talking about those kind of weapons, those mental weapons. Those weapons won't work against me. Come on. In the name of Jesus, I declare deliverance. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we've got to open our mouth and say, these things will not have me. Glory. That's how you exercise uh, authority in scripture. That's how you exercise authority in your life. When you open your mouth and say, God has me. Come on. Everything, every weapon that's formed against me will not work in the name of Jesus. I declare it now. Isaiah chapter 54 and 17. Let's, let's, uh, let's declare another one. Let's declare another one. I am, a, I am, watch this, established in righteousness. Okay. I am established in righteousness. And oppression is far from me. But, but I'm going to go a step further. Not just oppression, depression. Come on. That is far from me. I don't claim it. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about Isaiah chapter 54 and 14. Isaiah 54, 14. It, it, it says that I am established in righteousness. I am not established in problems. I am not established in what the world says I am. Come on. I believe who God says I am. Glory. I believe that I'm protected under the blood of Christ. Come on. And, and we've got to be radical. We're not we're not opening up our mouth. We're not making the confession enough. And that's why some of us are still stuck in these ruts. We're still stuck in these ruts because we're too quiet. People look at me all the time and say, why are you so loud? Why are you so loud when it comes to preaching and teaching the word of God? We can hear you in the whole house. Why? Why do you have to be so loud? Watch this. Because I don't need to hear the enemy in my ears. I, I'm loud like this because my voice overrides the devil's voice. See it? My, my, my praise is louder than the enemy's voice. Come on. The devil, the devil, the devil tells me that I can't make it. The devil will tell you you cannot make it. Come on. But watch this. God inhabits the praises of his people. So that means that when I hear the devil's voice, God, I praise you. Come on. That that right there just elevated. Come on. The devil don't like to hear you praising God. That's if, if, if he can't, if he if there's anything that the devil hates, he hates praise. If you want to get on the devil's nerve, if you want to run him away from you, then you say, God, I thank you. Even if you don't think you got a reason to say it, you say, God, I thank you. Come on. And when you open up your mouth and you give God that praise, you will see things fall off you. I, I can tell you for me. I, I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. It works for me. Huh. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Look, watch this. Father, I know it don't look good right now. Lord, I, I know it looks like I'm losing. Come on. Is that real? Have you ever felt like you was losing? The enemy wants to amplify that. Come on. The, the, the clinical term for that is anxiety. We bind the spirit of anxiety from off of our minds. Come on. I've got to say, I, I'm not anxious for anything. Watch this. Because I believe God's got it. That's what I believe. Come on. I confess the scripture. Jesus told me not to be anxious for nothing. Sometimes, watch this. And, and, I, and I'm already there. Sometimes you can't believe your own voice. Okay. I can't believe my own voice when I hear it sometimes to say, you know what? You might as well give up. I, I can't believe that. 
I've got to stand on the word of God and say, yes, I hear what's going on in my head. But Jesus said, come on, do, do I have anybody that's bold enough to say, but Jesus said. If you can, if you can just incorporate that in your daily walk. Yeah, I, I, I know I hear depression. I hear hopelessness, hopelessness in my mind. But guess what? But Jesus said. Come on. That I don't have to be anxious, that I don't have to worry, because that means he's already got me. All I got to do, watch this, is trust him. Come on. All I've got to do is trust him and watch him do it. And that's and that's not easy. Naturally, it's not easy because it's more easier to listen to those voices that are telling you you're not worth it, that are telling you you're going to lose, that are telling you you're not good enough, that are telling you you're not handsome enough, they're telling you you're not pretty enough, they're telling you you're not smart enough. Come on. They're telling you that you cannot make it. But I cannot believe what the enemy is telling me. I refuse to believe it. I confess the word of God over my life. I confess it over my children's life. And I believe what the Bible says. If the Bible says that it's not possible for me to fail with God, then that's what I believe. Glory. You've got to confess some stuff in your atmosphere, not just some stuff, but you've got to confess the scripture in your atmosphere on today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That is confession. Can I have five people? Can it just can I have five people that says I confess that no weapon formed against me will prosper? Come on. Even if it's in my my own mind. Come on. Even if the devil wants to use my own mind against me, it will not work in the name of Jesus because God says it wouldn't work. Glory. Hallelujah. Willie Carpenter, True Light Healing and Deliverance Ministry. My pastor is Pastor Melvin Wright, along with Evangelist Kathy Wright. Glory to God. Our eldest, Elder Melvina Carpenter. Okay. And I thank God for each one of you signing on tonight. We are going to get into the word. Let's turn into your Bibles to Luke. Chapter 10, verse 19. Luke 10, 19. Glory. Started off with confession. Confess the scripture in your atmosphere. Come on, this is necessary right now. Glory to God. It's 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 911. We are in a 911 situation. We are in an urgent situation, and we are not at a place where we could be quiet on God. We are not at a place where we can just sit back and let the devil do whatever he wants to do to our mind. And we just accept it like this is life. This is the way it's supposed to be. I bind that mindset in Jesus name. Glory. While you're turning in your uh, Bibles to Luke chapter 10, verse 19, I'm going to pray right quickly. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we thank you for what you have done so far, Lord. We thank you for being here. Father, I thank you for showing up. Because we confess your word. I sense your presence. Father, I, 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 I thank you in advance for what your word is about to do. Father, I pray that I decrease and you increase. Father, I say that I decrease so that you can increase. Father, use me in this broadcast for your glory. Father, I pray that the people who are listening on tonight, I pray that they pick something up in this word that causes them to turn their mind around and say, you know what? I can do better. That says, you know what? I'm going to trust you, God. Father, I thank you in advance for doing it. Father, I love you, and I'm turning the broadcast over to you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 10. I am excited. Luke chapter 10. Verse 19, I'm going to read it right quickly. This is Jesus Christ talking. 
All right. This is uh, written in red. It's the hot stuff, as my pastor said. This is chapter Luke, chapter 10, verse 19. It says, behold, this is Jesus Christ talking to the disciples. In other words, let me say this. This is Jesus Christ talking to me and you. This is what Christ is saying. He's saying, behold, I, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means hurt you. Let me say that again. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is Christ talking. This past weekend, my wife and I, we, we traveled to Greenville, South Carolina to, uh, to be there for a, a service that was uh, preached by John Eckhart. Um, many, you, many of you may know him. Uh, he is a well-known uh, preacher, pastor, apostle, uh, and he is an awesome author. He has written many books uh, on prayers and deliverance. Uh, and uh, one of the books that he has written is called uh, Prayers That Rout Demons. It's a powerful book. Uh, we had the honor of hearing him preach live uh, this past Friday, and we were all blessed and we were all encouraged, uh, were we not? That was something that we needed. It was uh, my wife and I, along with uh, uh, Pastor and Evangelist and uh, uh, our family members there, uh, we went there to support one of our sisters in another ministry, and it was an awesome time in the Lord. Uh, later on, uh, we went uh, that uh, Sunday on the way back home. We, we went to Charlotte, North Carolina, and we visited the Billy Graham um, Library. Awesome place. A, if you ever need to be encouraged in the Lord, if you ever uh, need your faith renewed, I encourage you to visit the Billy Graham Library in Charlotte, North Carolina. So just a few hours away from us, but it was worth the drive. Amen. So we... Uh, we went in there and, and we got encouraged and, and we got to uh, go through a tour. OK. And as we're walking around the building and we're touring the different places, uh, we're looking at the different uh, different areas in the different parts of uh, Billy Graham's ministry. Uh, there was something there in particular that really caught my attention. Um, once when you get into the building, you notice that there are all kinds of quotes on the wall. Uh, there are all kinds of quotes from Billy Graham, quotes from other uh, preachers and ministers uh, that have poured into the ministry and that have been blessed by the ministry. One of the things uh, that really blessed me and that encouraged me on on uh, Sunday is that, uh, excuse me, it was Monday. It was Billy. It was the words of Billy Graham. He said, and, and I'm going to paraphrase. It was a, it was a long quote there. And he said that many people over his lifetime have has given Billy Graham a lot of credit for all of the thousands and thousands of people that have been saved under his ministry. And he does not take the credit for any of that. OK, he gives all of the credit to the Lord. All right. Um, but there was one thing that he said that stood out to me. He said he believes that and what he's seen in his ministry is that if you preach and teach the word with authority, that heaven responds. When you preach and teach the word with authority, heaven responds. And that and that thing stuck with me. And the Lord, he 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 ministered to me and he 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 led me here to Luke, chap Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Christ said, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents. God wants to remind us on tonight that he has given us authority, watch this, to come out of whatever we're into. We have the God-given authority to speak ourselves out of darkness, okay? 
Let's look at the scripture. First of all, let's set the setting for the scripture. John, excuse me, Luke chapter 10, 19. In this particular uh, scripture, the apostles had got, Jesus had sent them out. Okay. Jesus had sent out his apostles and they went out into the towns preaching and teaching the word. But not only were they preaching and teaching the word, watch this. They were casting out demons. Okay. There were people that were uh, uh, possessed with demons and spirits that were causing them to behave in a way that was ungodly. And God has given them the authority to cast those demons out. Okay. He told them he and, and the, the apostles were surprised that they were able to be able to speak to a spirit and the spirit leave. See it. What God is doing us with us on tonight is he's reminding us of the power that he has given all of the believers or the followers of Christ. Okay. You've got the authority and the power to come out of some stuff that you are in. You are not hopeless. Your situation is not a dead end. Okay. A lot of people give up on themselves because they feel like they don't have the power to come out. What Christ is reminding us on the in this passage on tonight is that, yes, I have given you the authority. OK, he said he's talking to the, the disciples. Yes, I've given you the authority. Watch this to trample on serpents and the scorpions. Now, what is the word authority mean? What does it mean to have authority? Okay. Authority means that you have the power to command some stuff. And in order for a police officer to arrest some someone, he has to have the authority to do it. Okay. The authority comes because the power is behind him of the state that he's working for to lock you up and take you somewhere. Okay. So in order for us to have authority in the spiritual realm, we've got to have power. So what Jesus is saying is not only do you have the authority, but you have the power. Okay. So what do we have the authority and the power over? He said scorpions and serpents. Now, what are these scorpions and serpents? These are not. Now, now, now some people, what they do is they take scripture literal. But I want us to understand that Jesus was symbolic. Yes, many of the things that Jesus said is literal. But with this particular passage, he's talking about scorpions and serpents being the enemies of your soul. He's talking about spiritual matters. OK, he's talking about poverty. You've got the authority to overcome poverty. Come on, somebody. You and, and what's another scorpion? Depression is a scorpion. Come on, somebody. What, what is another scorpion? Sexual abuse. Come on. Drug abuse. You've got the authority to overcome these scorpions. Come on. I, I'm talking about the scorpion or the serpent of drug addiction. Come on. I'm talking about the scorpion and, and the serpent of abuse. Some of us have been abused in our lives and we've never healed from that. Come on. You've got the authority in Christ to overcome that. Come on. I, I, I'm talking about the, the scorpion of, of, of excessive grief, excessive worryation. Come on. Worrying about how I'm going to take care of this. How is this going to work out? God has already given us the authority in Christ to overcome these things. You've got the, uh, uh, the, the power and the authority to overcome the scorpion. And the serpent of homosexuality. Come on. You can come out of that. Come on. We've got we've got witnesses. We've got long list of people who have come out of that. And God says he has given us the authority and the power to overcome all of the, 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 the devil's tactics. Jesus Christ gave the disciples. He gave Peter the keys to the kingdom. And he said, Jesus Christ said that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I've come to announce over your life today that the gates of hell will not prevail against you. 
When I say the gates of hell, I mean the, the plans, the authority, the strategy of hell will not work against you in Jesus' name. I declare it now. It will not work against me. And the and I declare it now. One of the ways that we exercise authority is by opening up our mouths. Okay. The, uh, the, uh, the, the, the apostles understood that when they open up their mouth, when they release what God has given them, when they release the power of God over their atmosphere, things begin to change. If you want to see things change in your life, then you've got to open up your mouth and take your authority that God has already given you in Christ. Take authority over sickness. Take authority over poverty. Come on. Just because your parents was broke, just because your father, your mother, just because your grandfather, your grandparents never had a lot does not mean that that is the end for you, that that is exactly what you are going to get. You have to take authority over generational curses. Glory to God. You've got to take authority over generational curses. And when I take and when I say take authority, not just take authority, you've got to destroy it in the spiritual realm. Come on, somebody. Divorce, take authority over it. Come on. Yes, I know many of us come from families where the mother and the father have broken up, but I've come to tell you that that does not have to be your story. Okay. That does not have to be your story. Come on. Some of us are surrounded by people that are doing things that are adverse to scripture. Some of us are surrounded by people every day that are living lives that what the Bible would consider wicked or evil. And yet we still see them prospering. David said that in the scripture. He noticed that even though he was living a holy life, he saw the wicked. It, it appeared to be prospering. OK, but I've come to tell you on tonight that when you open up your mouth and when you confess the scripture, when you confess that, yes, I recognize I have authority. Okay. I did not become, uh, I, I did not experience deliverance until I realized the authority and the power that I had in my own mouth. Jesus Christ told the disciples in, 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 in uh, Luke chapter 10, 19, behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents. That means you can walk right over it. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Jesus Christ never told the disciples that just because you are a follower of Christ, that your life is going to be a cakewalk. Okay. Now, many people believe that because we're Christians, that means that we're not supposed to have any problems. And I've come to remind you on tonight that sometimes because you are a Christian, you have more problems than the average person. But just because we have more problems, it just only means that we serve a greater God. It means that regardless of what I'm going through, that means my victory is greater. Okay. The greater the problem that you overcome, the greater the victory. Glory to God. That's why when many people come to church, they run around the church. Because they know what they went through. One of the things that I learned on this weekend while we were uh, in Greenville with John Eckhart is not to judge nobody's praise. I can't judge somebody's praise. I, I, I understand that uh, uh, we all go through different trials, different tribulations in life. Okay. But regardless of what I've gone through, my praise has got to reflect the victory. I, there is authority in praising God. Okay. Some people run around the church. Some people dance right where they are. Some people break down and cry, but we cannot judge somebody else's praise. It used to be when, when you see people running around the church, we would pray for them. That's what we should be doing. Praying for those that have received their deliverance. Praying for those that have taken authority over the enemy. Do not let the enemy have authority over your life. Glory to God. Open your mouth and give a confession. I confess that I have the authority. I receive the authority that Jesus Christ has given me in the word. I receive the authority. I believe in the authority and the power that Christ has given me in the word. 
So when I preach the word, when I teach the word, I do so with power. I do so with excitement. I do so with the authority. He said, behold, I have given you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy. Some of us are giving the devil too much power. Some of us are giving our problems too much power. Some of us are, are a, uh, we are basically giving uh, props, worshiping our problems, confessing our problems, and not confessing the authority of God. And because we are doing that, we are dropping the ball. The church and a whole is dropping the ball because we are not walking in our authority that Christ has given us. The children are not walking in authority. They have given their, many of our children have given the authority to the world. We let the world dictate what happens to us. We let our friends dictate what we think. Stop giving your friends authority over your mind. Stop giving your family members authority over your mind. Stop giving your haters authority over your mind. Come on, every time someone says something to you that is a that is a hater comment. What is a hater comment? Oh man, you're not going to make it. Man, you're crazy. Man, you're going to be stuck in that situation the rest of your life. That is a hater comment. And when you believe it, you give that person authority over your life. The Bible, Jesus Christ has come to remind us on tonight. Stop giving the devil authority over your mind. Stop giving him authority over your mind. Stop believing what the devil is telling you about your mind that is negative. Stop giving the devil authority over your mind. Take back the authority. Jesus Christ said, I have given you the authority. But why aren't we using it? We've got to start using the authority that Christ has given us if we want to see deliverance from what we're going through. Some of us have more faith in the doctors. We have more faith in the medicines, in the pills than we do in the word of God. How does this look in real life? We, we hear all the time that I don't know how this looks in real life. I have people come to me and tell me that, yeah, you know what? You're preaching and you're teaching a good word, but how does that look in real life? When I'm inside school and I'm sitting at a desk and I'm trying to concentrate on what the teacher's saying, but I've got these voices in my head telling me that I need to be worried about something. How does this scripture help me then? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. There are many times where you're not going to remember scripture. There's, there are times where you're not going to remember exactly the, the scripture in verse for every situation that you're going through. But you have to remember this, that regardless of what hits your mind, you have the authority to change it and make it better. Come on. And if you believe that, then you are believing scripture. Come on. You may not remember Luke chapter 10, verse 19, but you can remember this. God has given me the authority over my own mind. Glory to God. God has given me the authority over my own depression. Come on. I don't claim it. I take authority over it and I destroy it. It starts with you saying it. It starts with you saying it. It starts with you confessing it. It starts with you saying this. I confess. I declare. I take authority over my own mind. Okay. The world does not have authority over my mind. Okay. My friends don't have authority over my mind. What does that mean? That means I don't have to think what everybody else is thinking. My friends will tell me, you know what? We're going over here. We're going to do this ABC. I'm talking to the young and to the old. We've all got friends that could be a bad influence. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 33 that bad association spoils a useful habit. 
that bad association corrupt good character. That means that we have the authority over our minds not to go with the crowd. Okay. When we are at work and we've got people gathered around the, the coffee, the coffee spot right there, everybody gathers around and talking. Are you being separate? Or are you just going to go and flow with what the conversation is? The Bible says that the church is called the called out ones. That means that we are called to be separate. See, the problem is we don't want to be different from our friends. We don't want to be different. We, we say we want to be different. We say we want to be original. But when it comes down to it, we want to be like everybody else. And that's the problem. What the apostles understood in this passage is they say, you know what? We're casting out demons. We're not like everybody else. Everybody don't have the same power that you have. Everybody don't have the same authority that you have. You are different. And you're not supposed to use your difference uh, in a way that causes you to be sad. That is something to be godly proud of. Come on. I dare five people to put on the screen. I am proud of my difference. Come on. You are a priest. You watch this. You are royalty. The, the, the Bible calls you royalty. Glory to God. You don't have to be sitting on a throne in England to be royal. Come on. The Bible said Christ has already said in scripture, we are a royal priesthood. And what comes with royalty? Power and authority. Okay. You don't have to think like everybody else. You don't have to flow with everybody else. It's okay to say I'm standing different because God tell, God says that his way is better than yours. Go, glory to God. That's it. That's it. God's way is better than yours. God's way of thinking, uh, God's way of handling, God's way of speaking is better than yours. It's better than mine. Come on. We have got to open up our mouth and say, God, I praise you for the authority that you have given me to come out of this. Use the authority that Christ has given you. Luke chapter 10, verse, uh, uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 9. Behold, I have given you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. You got the power, you have the power and the authority, watch this, to overcome your anxiety. You got the power and the authority to overcome depression. You've got the power and the authority to overcome false teaching. Come on, somebody. You've got the power and authority to change your atmosphere at your house. Come on. You're, watch this. All you've got to do is say, God, I turn it over to you. Glory to God. God, I turn it over to you. We don't. We don't want to turn nothing over to God. We don't want to, we don't want to give nothing to God. Some of us don't even believe Luke, that God is real anymore. Can I be real? I, I, I sense it. We don't want to give God nothing. And I'm not talking about tithing. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about your faith. We don't want to say, God, I turn it over to you. We don't listen. All these scriptures. All of these prayers mean nothing that has without God's power and God's authority. You can be, you can write the best book and say the best prayers in this book, but it means nothing without God's power. You've got to confess with your mouth and say, God, I just turn it over to you. That's the word. I, I may not remember what particular scripture, I may not remember what passage and what verse, but all I can I can remember this, God, I turn it over to you. That's what it looks like in real life. Come on. When I'm in that situation, when I'm in when I'm at the job, when I'm at school, and I got people gathered around me, and they're telling me all this negative stuff, and I got all this negative stuff beating me up in my head, all I got to say is this, 
God, I turn it over to you. Come on. I dare five people to put that on the screen right now. God, I turn this over to you. Whatever your this is. Whatever your this is, you've got to say, God, I turn that thing over to you. Come on, somebody. God, I turn that thing over to you. You've got to confess it. Come on. Some of us need to, uh, we need to pick up a pen and we need to write that down. Uh, back in the days when, when we were doing something bad in school, the teacher would make us write sentences. Okay, And these sentences would be, you have to write the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> Some of us, we know what we're talking about. But guess what? I guarantee if you get a piece of paper and you write, God, I turn this over to you, you will begin to learn it. Glory to God. The reason why the teachers made us write the same thing over and over again so that we can remember it for next time. Some of us, we've got to, we've got to take a pencil and literally write, God, I turn this over to you. Watch this, and you can fill in the blank. God, I turn blank over to you. Watch this, it may be depression. God, I turn my depression diagnosis over to you. And just keep writing it, come on. Watch this, keep writing it till you believe it. Somebody, glory to God. Jesus told John to write. Why would Jesus tell John to write? Because Jesus knew that there was power in the mind when you write something down. You've got to literally write. You've got to do something. You can't just say, okay, I believe it. There's got to be an action with that. Or nothing's going to happen. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. So that means if I say I got faith, I'm going to do something with my faith. I'm not just going to sit back and say, okay, I believe in God. Yeah, I believe. And just wait for miracles to happen. It doesn't work that way. You've got to do the work. Come on. So that means that, yes, I've got to pick up a pen and I've got to write, God, I'm turning this thing over to you. I'm, I'm turning this thing over to you. God, I'm turning this thing over to you. That situation that I'm dealing with in my mind, God, I'm turning this thing over to you. That homosexual feeling I have, God, I'm turning this over to you. My desire to be uh, sexual, sexually active, God, I'm turning this over to you. That, that feeling I got in my mind that, that's telling me that I don't need to be here, that it's time for me to go, Lord, I'm turning that thing over to you. And when you, and you, when you write that enough, your mind will receive it. And your thoughts will change. See it? When your thoughts change, your life changes. That's why some of us, we don't get anything different because we're not doing anything different. Glory. So sometimes we've got to literally pick up a pen and keep writing that. God, I turn that thing over to you. And when you, are, when, when you do that, you, you take an authority. Okay? Because if you don't take authority over yourself, the devil will take authority over you. Please remember that. If you do not take authority over your mind, the enemy will take authority over you. And we must keep in mind this. Watch this. The devil is the enemy of your soul. That means the only thing he wants to see you is eliminated. He doesn't want to see you make it. He wants to see you quit. He wants to see you throw in a towel. He wants to see you run away. He wants to see you end up like nobody. He wants to see you with no hope. That's what the enemy wants. When you give him authority, that's what he's going to do. He's going to make you believe that you cannot make it. What Jesus Christ is reminding us on tonight is this. You've got the authority. How do we confess our authority? By literally saying, God, I turn this over to you. Lord, I turn it over to you. If you got to write it, if you got to write it a hundred times, you write it until you get it. God, I turn this over to you. This feeling of sadness that I got on my mind is so heavy, Lord, I turn this over to you. That feeling of sadness that's so heavy that makes you feel like you don't want to get out of bed. Father, I turn this over to you. And when you say God, and when you laying down in that bed and, and that sadness is so heavy on you sometimes that you can't, 
that you feel like you can't move, when you say, Lord, I turn this over to you, the next thing you got to do is get up. Sit up. Don't stay down. God has given you the authority and the power to come out of whatever you are into. But the devil does not want you. See, this is why I don't have a lot of people watching right now. Because the enemy don't want the people knowing about their authority. <laughs> See? And, and this is the power of teaching and preaching the word of God. is to tell the people of God the information that the devil does not want you to have. See it? When you're preaching a message of prosperity, when you're preaching a message that Jesus loves everybody and everything is going to work out perfectly, when you're preaching that kind of message, oh, you're going to have hundreds of people watching. <laughs> but when you start preaching that God has given me authority to come out of this, the enemy will say, you don't need to listen to that. This is what we are commanded to do with Christ. We are commanded to preach and teach the word of God in season, out of season. That means even when it's popular to do it, I'm going to push. And then when it's not popular, I'm still going to push. This is my responsibility as a follower of Christ. This is our responsibility. As a follower of Christ. That's why we're still pushing. Glory. Don't let the enemy of your soul take authority over your life. Okay. Refuse to hand over authority to the enemy. When you are involved in a war. When you are involved in fighting. The war is not over until one side gives up power and authority to the other side. So what, the, what God is warning us and, and encouraging us and reminding us on today is that we are not to give authority to the enemy of our souls. Come on. I will not give the devil authority over my life. Come on. I, I, dare, I dare at least three people to say that. I will not give the devil authority over my life. In Jesus name do not give him the authority over your life glory to God behold I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you does that mean that we'll never have any hurt huh no, it doesn't. Does that mean that we'll never experience any pain in this walk? That's not the meaning of this scripture. Because some of us are going through some pain right now. Some of us have been hurt very deeply. But we are still walking the word of God out. We are still pushing the word of God. We are still living the word of God. And watch this. We're doing it through the pain. Come on. When, when, when Jesus Christ said nothing by no means hurt you, that means your salvation is still secure regardless of what hits you. In other words, watch this. I'm still saved. It may not look good. I may be going through a rough time right now. But my salvation is not hurt. Come on, somebody. I am still saved. The Lord still has me. Come on. I'm still protected. I'm still here. Watch this. My eternal future is still secure. Glory to God. You can only say that in Christ. My eternal future is still secure because I'm exercising my power and authority that Christ has given me over serpents. And when he says you've got power over serpents and scorpions, it's not talking about actual snakes. It's not talking about rats, lizards, and things that we're scared of. It's not talking about spiders. Come on. I remember reading a story once about a, a, a pastor that took this verse literally and, and had a, a snake, and he tried to put the snake in his face, and the snake bit him. 
Use wisdom. When Jesus Christ said that no scorpions and no serpents is going to hurt you, he means that the enemy cannot hold you down. The enemy cannot destroy you. Yes, the enemy may hit you, may hit you a couple times. Watch this, may even hit you with a low blow. Y'all don't want to talk. Some of us have been hit with a low blow below the belt. In boxing, that's an illegal hit. But the enemy don't care about a leader. There's no length, there's no depth that the devil would go. It does not matter to him. Okay. But when the when the Bible says, when Jesus Christ said that we have the authority to walk over these things, that means we've got the authority to successfully come out of this. We are we do not have to stay stuck in misery. We do not have to stay stuck in depression and excessive grief and all of these other tactics that the enemy uses to stop our ministry. It will not work in the name of Jesus. It won't work. I declare and I decree that whatever the devil tried to do, it won't work. I declare the authority that Christ has given us right now over myself and my family in Jesus name. Each one of my children are successful. They are victorious. I speak it over them now. Glory. But we've got to speak this over ourselves. And we've got to keep speaking it until we believe it. Some of us, we don't say this because we don't believe it. But if you believe it, if you believe it, you'll see the changes in your life. You'll see the breakthroughs. You'll see the miracles. You'll see all of these things that you are asking God for. You will see it begin to manifest when you allow yourself to believe what you are saying. Glory to God. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. And nothing by shall and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Jesus Christ is confirming that when he speaks over your life, that you are truly protected. The blood of Jesus Christ covers his followers. The blood of Christ covers his children. All you have to do is open up your mouth and say, yes, I believe. All you have to do is open up your mouth, get you a pen and pencil, write it down. God, I'm turning this over to you. God, I'm releasing this problem over to you and do so in Jesus name we came from Luke chapter 10 verse 19 on tonight <clears throat> let us pray Father, in the name of your son Jesus we come before you on tonight Lord and we say thank you father we thank you for the word we thank you for the power of your word thank you for reminding us tonight of our authority Thank you for reminding us that we have the power to come out of what we are into. Thank you for allowing us to experience deliverance. For those of us who are stuck in a particular way, for those of us who are stuck in a particular rut, Father, we thank you for deliverance. For those of us who are, who are stuck in a financial bind, Father, we thank you for financial deliverance. Thank you for increasing our faith on tonight. Thank you for watching over our finances, watching over our houses and our children on tonight. Father, thank you for lifting us up. Thank you for keeping us in a place that's safe. Father, we give you the honor, the glory, and all the praise because you deserve it. It's in the matchless and powerful name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. This is Willie Carpenter with True Light Healing and Deliverance Ministry. I pray that the word has blessed you, encouraged you on tonight. And I, and I want to remind you all again that this is still a deliverance ministry. 
that true light healing and deliverance is still a deliverance ministry. It is still a ministry where lives are changed. It is still a ministry where people are encouraged. It is still a ministry where the downtrodden are encouraged. It is still a ministry that God has blessed. We are still pushing and we thank God for you. We are praying with you and we are praying for you in Jesus name. Amen.